10 Forgotten British Television Sitcoms of the 1980s. How many of these will you remember? A very entertaining sitcom from the early part of the 1980s, Keep It In The Family is probably the least forgotten of the 10 shows featured in today's video. However, it still seems to get overlooked when conversation turns to British TV sitcoms of the 1980s. Running for five series between January 1980 and October 1983, Keep It In The Family starred the excellent Robert Gillespie as fun-loving Dudley Rush, a cartoonist who earns his living from drawing the cartoon strip Barney the Bionic Bulldog. Always wearing a puppet of a lion called Leo on his drawing hand, Dudley and his wife Muriel live above their two daughters, Susan and Jackie. Not only a most enjoyable sitcom, Keep It In The Family proved very popular with viewers and was a staple of Thames Television's comedy output of the early 80s. All the more surprising then that this winning show doesn't get afforded the repeat treatment very often today. Keep It In The Family is available on DVD, but as with many of the series featured today, it was released by Network, who sadly went into administration in 2023, meaning their releases are becoming a little harder to find. Another popular comedy from Thames Television, Cowboys made its debut on ITV in 1980, just a few months after Keep It In The Family. Another unfairly forgotten gem, Cowboys starred the late great Roy Kinnear as Joe Jones, owner of a rather dodgy building firm which employed hopelessly shoddy builders Geezer, Wobbly Ron and Eric. In addition to Roy Kinnear, the fine cast included glamour girl Debbie Linden as the company's secretary, wonderful character actor David Kelly as Wobbly Ron, and, as geezer, Colin Welland, who would go on to win an Academy Award for his screenplay for the film Chariots of Fire. Made at a time when television comedy had the simple aim of making people laugh, Cowboys did just that, and is still enjoyable when viewed today. Episodes of Cowboys are available here on YouTube, and DVDs can still, at the time of recording this video, be found on places such as Amazon. The Yorkshire television sitcom Hallelujah starred the one and only Thora Heard, a Salvation Army Captain Emily Ridley, determined to restore moral values in a small Yorkshire town, with the assistance of her niece Alice, played by carry-on great Patsy Rowlands. The series was created by Dick Sharples, who was the writer behind another, better-known Thor Heard sitcom, In Loving Memory. Running for two series between 1983 and 1984, Hallelujah had a gentle pace to it, which suited the series perfectly. Once again, you can catch episodes of Hallelujah on YouTube, and it is also available on DVD, although copies are becoming scarce. The 1988 sitcom Andy Cap was a bold attempt to try something a little different within the television comedy genre. Based on the legendary comic strip character, the television version of Andy Cap was remarkably faithful to its original source, and often featured characters breaking the fourth wall and speaking in little asides to the camera. James Bolan was the absolute perfect choice in the title role and was matched by future Emmerdale star Paula Tilbrook as his fearsome wife Flo, rolling pin permanently on standby. With scripts written by renowned novelist and screenwriter Keith Waterhouse and a perfectly cast actor in the lead role, the ingredients for success were certainly there, but Andy Cap turned out to be a resounding flop and lasted for just six episodes. As it was shot on film with no studio audience, the series has an almost empty feel to it and, with hindsight, could have probably benefited from the laughter of an audience in attendance. You can watch episodes of Andy Cap on YouTube while the DVD of the series is now a little tricky to find. 
the BBC sitcom Oh Happy Band was the final television starring role for the great Harry Worth. Written by Jeremy Lloyd and David Croft, creators of Are You Being Served and Hello Hello, this forgotten sitcom saw Harry Worth playing a character of the same name, leading a brass band in the small town of Nettlebridge. The main theme of the series revolved around the attempts of Harry and his bandmates to thwart the building of a new airport near to the town. Although his greatest period of success occurred during the 1960s, the presence of Harry Worth in his 1980 production still lent a certain gravitas to Oh Happy Band, but it was not enough to save the series from relative obscurity. With no DVD and only a few clips available online, watching Oh Happy Band today is not exactly an easy task. During the 1980s, Jim Davidson was one of the most popular comedians in the UK, and looking to capitalise on that popularity, Thames Television created starring roles for Jim in two peak time TV sitcoms, Up the Elephant and Round the Castle, and its sequel, Home James. Debuting in November 1983 and running for three series until November 1985, up the Elephant and Round the Castle features lots of cheeky chappy cockney banter from the star in his role as Jim London, an unemployed single man who inherits a Victorian terraced house in the Elephant and Castle district of London. Also along for the ride were Coronation Street star Sue Nichols as sex-starved neighbour Wanda, future EastEnders star John Barden as Jim's dad, and in Series 1, future EastEnders star Anita Dobson as Jim's love interest Lois. Although Up the Elephant and Round the Castle was, predictably not well received by critics, the show proved popular with viewers, enough to merit a sequel, Home James, which came along in 1987. Many episodes of Up the Elephant and Round the Castle can be seen here on YouTube, while the complete series is still currently available on DVD. Although pop star David Essex had appeared in a number of films by this point, 1988's The River was his first major acting role on television. More of a romantic comedy than a traditional TV sitcom, The River featured Essex as Davy Jackson, a lovable rogue who has turned his back on crime and now works as a lockkeeper in a picturesque rural village. Sharing his cottage with his eccentric Aunt Betty, Davy eventually finds himself falling for Sarah, who moves into his cottage while her narrowboat is being repaired. A sitcom that makes you smile rather than laugh out loud, The River ran for one series of six episodes. As with most of the sitcoms featured in this video, you can watch episodes of The River on YouTube and DVD. Featuring an excellent cast and scripts written by comedy legend Roy Clark, the man responsible for such classics as Last of the Summer Wine, Open All Hours and Keeping Up Appearances, Man's Best Friends just didn't catch on with audiences as might have been expected, the series running for just one series in 1985 on Channel 4. Perhaps if it had been broadcast on BBC or ITV, the show might have stood a better chance. The always brilliant Fulton Mackay stars as the recently retired Hamish James Ordway, who finds himself living in a boarding house run by the disorganised Henry Mann. The officious and interfering Hamish is asked to help sort the chaotic nature of the boarding house and its residents, which include carry-on giant Bernard Breslaw as Duncan and Patricia Brake as Dolly. A bit of an obscure oddity, Man's Best Friends can be seen on YouTube and on DVD. For a dramatic soap opera, Coronation Street has been the catalyst for a surprising amount of sitcom spin-offs over the years. First, in 1965, there was Pardon the Expression, starring Arthur Lowe as former street resident Leonard Swindley. This, in turn, led to a further spin-off, Turn Out the Lights, which featured the same character. Years later, in 1985, came The Brothers McGregor, starring Paul Barber, 
and Philip Whipchurch as entrepreneurial half-brothers who run a dodgy second-hand car business in Liverpool. The Brothers McGregor only just qualifies as a Coronation Street spin-off as the two main characters only featured in the soap very briefly and were played by two different actors. This meant the series could stand on its own merits right from the start and it would prove popular enough with viewers to run for four series until 1988. Many episodes of The Brothers McGregor can be found here on YouTube. Although relatively forgotten as a mainstream comedy series, Kinvig has attained a bit of a cult following over the years. This unusual science fiction sitcom was created by sci-fi legend Nigel Neal, perhaps most famous for creating Quatermass. Played by Tony Haygarth, the title character Des Kinvig, who owns a rundown electrical repair shop, meets the beautiful Miss Griffin, an interplanetary traveller from Mercury. They eventually team up to save Earth from attack by the alien Zux tribe. Despite boasting an unusual premise for a television sitcom and some great performances by the cast, Kinvig only lasted for a single series. Perhaps it was just a little bit too offbeat for the mainstream ITV audience at the time. Despite that, Kinvig is now seen by many as being something of a hidden gem. Once again, you can watch episodes of Kinvig on YouTube, and the series is available on DVD. How many of the series featured in today's video do you remember watching? Do you have any particular favourites amongst them? Which other forgotten British television sitcoms from the 1980s would you like to see included in a future Studio TV video? Please let me know in the comment section. If you enjoyed today's video, a little click on the thumbs up button is always very much appreciated. Feel free to subscribe to Studio TV if you haven't already done so. And do join me next time for more nostalgic goodness.